Hi everybody, I'm David Mash, and welcome to this series on the ARP 2600 um, advanced features. So um, today we're going to look at the voltage processors. Uh, I'm going to be using the Korg ARP 2600 module, but everything I do on this is immediately applicable to the full-size Korg ARP 2600 as well as to the original ARP 2600 because they're all the same uh, instrument electronically. So we're going to focus here on the voltage processors today and we're going to um, investigate what each of these do for us and some of the possible musical applications. So to begin I'm going to take just a simple square wave into the filter. Um, I'm going to open the filter with an envelope generator and I'm going to take the filter into the amplifier, open the amplifier with the same envelope and bring that to the output and we'll make that a little brighter. Very simple patch um, with no patch cords. So let's take a look at the voltage processors and try to understand the graphics here so that um, they, they really help us understand what's going on. So what you can see here is that um, just at the top here, we have an input labeled 1, which has nothing pre-wired to it. So anything you put in there is taken out this jack here, which is the output, but it's inverted. So if you put something in here, you get the inverted version of it here. Then 2 is here. This is minus 10 volts, and it goes through a potentiometer. So um, if I bring it all the way up, that's minus 10 volts here, which comes straight through to the inverter. So that gives us 10 volts output. Then there's a third input, which has nothing patched into it. So that's, again, something else that you can put in. And it comes out inverted there. But also note that from the diagram, you can see that 1 and 2 are summed to that output. And then input 4 is the keyboard control voltage. And it goes through a potentiometer and then in, and it's inverted. So all of these are summed there. These are summed just 50% each. And these are summed based on what the potentiometers do. So let's take a look at some of the things we can do with just this first part. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the keyboard voltage. I'm going to take it out from the inverter. And I'm going to replace the keyboard voltage input to VCO1. And I'm going to put it put it all the way over. So now we can see that that patch has been made. The keyboard voltage comes in pre-wired. It goes all the way through the, the, all of it is being sent into the inverter, the inverter then going into the keyboard. I'm going to change camera angles here and I'll let you see this. So first I'm going to take this out. So this is normal. I play a low note on the bottom of the keyboard and a high note on the top of the keyboard. Exactly as we would normally expect it to be. And now I'm going to re replace the normal keyboard voltage with the inverted keyboard voltage. So now I play on the top of the keyboard, I get a low note. I play on the low end of the keyboard, I get a high note. So that's with all of the voltage. If I only took half of the voltage, for instance, then as I play up the keyboard, I won't get a full octave. It's almost like an augmented chord, playing with three octaves. So even just using one patch cord here, we get a very, very um, powerful um, use of this voltage processor. Let's just take another quick look. What if I took an output from that? I'll take the sawtooth output from the oscillator, and I'm going to put it into here, into the second input. And if I took the output from the noise generator, 
So taking the output of the noise generator, put it up on max, give us some pink noise. And then I take the output here into the filter. Now, in this place, I get nothing. But if I, I can bring up the volume of VCO1, and now I have the volume of this noise, and I can mix them together. So in, in the audio frequency range, th these two um, potentiometers are basically providing me another little mixer inside the, the, the um, ARP 2600M. So if you've watched, for instance, my introductory video, I did exactly that. This was the bass line. This was the percussion track, and I could mix those and then take them into the, um, in, into the um, mixer. So um, the musical use of this is if I have the filter being used for something else, and this is a different musical part being played, I can do some mixing right here using the voltage processors. Okay, let's go back to our simple square wave. And now um, the next one is minus 10 volts through a potentiometer, through an inverter. And there's another input to that inverter. So we have actually two inverters that we could use simultaneously and a total of um, six inputs into these uh, mixers. So we could actually have a mix here and a mix here. Um, let's see, why would we use, um, so if this is positive 10 volts. When I invert it, I get minus 10 volts. So why would I do that? Um, well, so one thing I can do is if I put it into an audio frequency um, oscillator. If I use a minus 10 volts here, it's going to drive the frequency of this oscillator down by 10, vol 10 octaves. So um, that's really useful. For instance, if you have a low frequency, um, let's say like a sawtooth wave, we took a low frequency sawtooth wave into the input of the um, VCO1, we would get Okay, now if I take Now, if I take the minus 10 volts and drive that down, Drive you crazy yet? So um, a very, very slow ramp wave there. Um, you could have a low frequency oscillator of say 10 minutes in length and it could be gradually um, raising the pitch and maybe making it brighter. You could do some really interesting and eerie things with that. Um, and the last function of the voltage processors, let's get back to our is the lag processor. So the um, easiest thing to show you here is if I take the keyboard voltage into the lag processor, and then I take the output and I replace the keyboard voltage in the oscillator that we're listening to. So right now, because I have the potentiometer all the way to the left, I'm not lagging. The, the signal. If I put it all the way over, now I'm going to get So 
So we get portamento. Um, really useful for this module because since it doesn't come with a keyboard and, uh, and maybe the keyboard that you're using doesn't have a portamento control, you can simply take um, the keyboard voltage, which comes from whatever is patched in, either um, you know, uh, an analog uh, keyboard that just gives you CVs and gates, or a MIDI keyboard. Um, so that's what I'm using. I have a MIDI keyboard patched into here. And um, I'm, this gives me the keyboard voltage from MIDI. And I can use the lag processor to create um, Portamento. But what if I, instead of put the keyboard voltage in, what if I put actually, um, what if I put the output of the oscillator in the audio range, and I put that into the amplifier? So, What you hear is a kind of a low-pass filtering. And again, if you watch the um, video I did for the introduction, um, you'll notice that I did that with the bass line. I took the, the pulse wave output into the lag processor, and I used the lag processor to, as a low-pass filter on the bass line. So there you have it, a kind of uh, quick overview of the voltage processors on the ARP 2600. And again, everything I did on the 2600 module here is uh, applicable to the Korg full-size ARP 2600 as well as the original R2600, because they're all electronically identical. And uh, these voltage processors can do some really interesting musical things, and uh, we'll, we'll explore some more of those, as well as other uh, more advanced features of the ARP2600 um, in other videos. If you find these useful, please check out my website, machine.com. Um, it's a play on my name, mash -een, uh, machine. Um, I record uh, under the name Machine Music. You can see the logo on my hat and my shirt. And uh, that music is available on Spotify and Apple Music and wherever you get digital downloads and streams. And you can also find examples on my website along with videos and more of these ARP2600 videos. So um, please check it out and uh, take care and be safe.